the year is long and marked 1847. Misery seeps from the eyes of the Irish as bodies are exchanged for heaven. My touch points their journey's way from morning through noon thereafter till night. I bring for Ern a blight so rotten that soul and soil hold hope forgotten. With a heart I'd care, with eyes I'd cry, yet neither have I. If I was a being moral and principled in nature, then all of Ern's children would have forego their slaughter. Yet I am bound by neither, and destiny demands the death I deliver. Call me a murderer, I retort, liar. For it was my employer who orchestrated such mass scale horror, and they wear coats of red. The color red has colonized this century. It bleeds its way into every river. It feeds from below green fields that feel the rain run red from countless murdered above. And that's about the only thing that's fed these years. Red sheep breathe fire upon their master's order, burning everything they see, protecting nothing but greed. My cousin's eyes glow red against a backdrop of night. She kneels to take stock in the place where crows take flight. Her eyes shine so for her everlasting crying. And her shrieking voice wails louder than lightning. Cry, dear cousin, for England's tyranny unending and warn the underprivileged families of my presence approaching. I hold not the weight of lives I take. I but transform their energy from their physical state. And to where I deliver them, I cannot pass. For the sanctum of all souls lays beyond my grasp. And though each and every soul who joins me shares their journey the same, I take pleasure in listening to how their stories wide range. Hear tell of young Johnny and the seven short years of his journey. Born into a family without title or salary, he grew up shivering, constantly hungry. One day, he watched as his father changed color. He said, Daddy, it's cold. Why won't you come closer? He said, Daddy felt angry because he could not help me, though he agreed with Mommy that my fever was too deadly. It was early the next day when I woke to hear my mother cry. She said, he's dead, cried no one. Why? How will we survive? Lord, please save us from our decomposing demise. Thinking it then wise, Johnny's older brother stole from the Lord's stock a sheep for to slaughter. Then his mother was shot dead, defending her beloved robber. And her son was hung for the emotional disorder he caused for her shitter. Young Johnny then wept and wailed for days on end, and neither neighbor nor friend to save him did baller, fearing they too would catch the same fate as his father. The temperature then dived and soon. I arrived to carry and to cradle, to soothe and to settle and say it'll be okay, little one. No more hardship your way shall come.
Night descends and evening snow, where ice grass breaks under the slow splintering sting of string dwindling lives. Then a piercing sun rises to reveal the stab of orphan growth, widowed folk in thatch roof smoke. It's a heavy tax to pay, say Leila, victims of stolen property. Suffered and paid have the Gaelic ancestry through 600 years of cultural dichotomy, insinuating civilized acts of military insanity, all with the everlasting undercurrent of building an English economy through armored convoys of gold and grain, rinsing dear iron like red leeches in rain. My dear cousin's wailing voice occupies a backdrop of everyday life. Not in 200 years will my work here be forgotten, nor population replenished. And yet still, through calculated campaigns of plantation migration, through insidious cultural and spiritual oppression, still songs are sung to enlighten this oppression. Faith bear witness, as do I, for before me I see a country both bruised and broken by colonial obsession, yet one with indispensable character, unsuited for extinction. Yet for every soul who will fight for their freedom, You'll find one forsaken soul who will sell everything they know so they can forego their struggle, whose beds are warm and stomachs full. These people who will ignore their patriotic call to crawl and clown underneath a foreign crown. They who rip apart their country's cause like starving dogs with blood-soaked jaws, who will jump when they are told, become monkeys far too mold, and then betray the bold heroic souls who would rather die than grow old watching their country fold. One in fifty is far too many for any sustained secrecy to accompany any talks of revolutionary activity. Here now is Dara O'Flaherty tells me his tale of brave camaraderie and cowardly treachery. He speaks to me in a voice smooth yet readily. They convicted my sister of assaulting an officer, but that bastard, he tried to rape her. And she had a bother on back with a smack to the face and a crack where it hurts. She left him squealing on the dirt like a pig given birth. But then, he sought to quickly to convict her as guilty. The words, off they bought in a bay for ten long years, went through her ears and tears. She shed none, due to her absent understanding of the English tongue. And something inside of me that rose the rebellion. And so before the sun set, I gathered my brethren. On a plan, we agreed to have my sister freed in a matter of days. Where English ships would set ablaze and the cell blockades would reveal post-raid a hole that was dug by an Irish man's spade. I entrusted the fire to Brendan Maguire. And so they spy on the ships, he said, off to inquire. The other men that sided with me would dig and keep watch as my sister was freed. But on the day struck disaster, as the fire did not transpire, and as we men lay awaiting the signal, from behind us sprung an arsenal of soldiers. <laughs> Nowhere for to run, not one gun between us, ensured our slaughter, as we dared not surrender to the very same officer that tried to abuse my sister. Twelve steel barrels stared down at us seven, and with a crack from each, we exchanged our bodies for heaven. 
I dare not think of what tortures await my sister, nor dare I consider the motives of Maguire. I'm a man in shame and deserve a fate no better. And to you, my gentle listener, whose name I have not heard a whisper, my time has come. Please, take me a yonder. The stories I hear will never disappear. They are the words of the dead and music to my ear. Though the severe devastation of this long year has near showered that sign, for I believe richness is found in a diversity of pain. But the stories of 1847 bring a bitter motif of lingering shame. Be it through murder, torture, hypothermia, the same. Those red coated intruders will forever carry their fair share of blame. Throughout this story, I have not shared my name as I deem that unnecessary. To know who I am, simply remember this century. I am seen throughout it, in every which way the I may stray. I have worked unceasingly to produce a period most dark in Ireland's history. I am your awaiting mystery, a face in life you shall never see. A promise of fate that cannot break. I am your God, to which all will bow the same.